R slash explain like I'm 5. Bummer comment says. Explain like I'm 5, the apparent rise in autistic people in the last 40 years. I'm curious as to the seeming rise of autistic humans in the last decades. Is it that it was just not understood, and therefore not diagnosed slash reported? Are there environmental or even societal factors that have corresponded to this increase in cases? Saliba says. As others have said diagnosis is more common now, but beyond that autism, is also much much more common. We don't know all the reasons, yet but mothers being exposed to BPA and FAS is implicated, in causing autism as a birth defect. I.e. It's most likely due to the increased use of plastics in the last 50 years. Yaiata Tittle says. It was called something else. Tuberculosis is an ancient disease, but you won't find any mention of it prior to the 1880s, because it was called consumption. And was common enough, that it was considered a personality trait. There's terms like idiot savant, that started in the 1880s as well. Mental retardation from around 1901. Imbecile entered English around 1550, but the meaning which transferred to English from French hasn't switched meaning since Latin. Cretum from 1775. In the 1980s terms like mental retardation were on their way out, but I remember being called slow, and being called an idiot savant. Rob749S says. Also, destigmatization means there is less reluctance to be, or have a family member diagnosed. Which means more people are being tested. R slash explain like M5. Status quality 4905 says. Explain like I'm 5, why do eggs turn solid, when you cook them? Conventional chemistry wisdom says that something which starts out as a liquid should either remain liquid, or evaporate when heat is applied. Why do eggs go in the opposite direction? Like Lizalty says. Explanation. Eggs whites contains a lot of what is called albumin which normally is like a bunch of small balls of hair. These balls can just easily move around each other. But when heated, these balls of hair will unfold, and bind together forming a network. You can kind of imagine it like a woven blanket instead. This blanket will keep together, and that is kind of the same, that happens when egg whites are heated. Spoon Lightning says. Cooking means that a chemical reaction is happening. Chemical reactions don't go back when you change the temperature. Cooked eggs are like a baked cake or a fried potato, they can't be simply cooled down to reverse the cooking. Some liquids do boil when you heat them enough, especially chemically simple ones. However most complex organic liquids like egg white, milk, or a quaffaba will cook before they boil. P. Storad in the ball says. The same way cooking cake batter causes it to turn into a solid, because of two reasons 1, it's not just a phase change like boiling water, it's a chemical reaction, which is why you can't then cook the egg slash cake, to make them turn back into a liquid, and 2, because the actual liquid in the egg slash cake batter does follow the standard phase change rules. The water evaporates, but it leaves behind the suspended slash dissolved solids, like if you boil salt water, you get a glass full of salt crystals. R slash explain like I'm 5. S marked says. Explain like I'm 5, in movies, stories and even in survival TV shows they tell you, that a fire protects you from attacks of predators during the night. Why and how does it work? Are there exceptions? Strakirkshan says. Fire is like a big scary monster to most animals. It's bright, noisy, and smells weird. So, they'd rather keep their distance. Plus, the smoke hides your scent, making it harder for them to find you. But, like any rule, there are exceptions. A really hungry predator might risk it, or bugs might be drawn to the light. So, it's not foolproof, but it's a good safety measure. Grid 326 says. Wild animals are flammable. They know what to do, when there's a wildfire, run. This is called a fight or flight instinct. 
they know they cannot fight the fire, since they do not possess water, a hose, or truck. Yodel 007 says. The predators have a stealth build, and rely on a sneak attack damage bonus which they don't get, because of the fire. Slash S. Jbarkuk says. To them it's magic, our superpower. They know what it is, but that they can't control it and we can. They also see our other superpower, but pedalism. A talk show, a guy says, I pick up a ball to throw, and my dog looks at me, like I'm a god. Galacticum says. There is a lot of logical sounding explanations here, but as an ecologist I think the reason is simply that most nocturnal animals stay away from highly lit environments, because that will give away their own advantage of being adapted to dark environments. This would make it a lot more probable for them to become prey, and give the preyed upon individual more time to react. Hence they avoid it, unless pressed by starvation. In nature, a predator will only attack, if it 100% sure it has a clear advantage. Otherwise the energy need, would not outweigh the risk of losing the prey, and hence the energy used, and or injury, and therefore likely death. So it is clean, and simple genetic coding caused by evolutionary pressures. I have not read any sources, or come across any studies on this particular topic, but I have done a bit of field work and research on light pollution and its effect on insect feeding bats. And here it is the above mentioned reason, among a few others. R slash explain like m5. Alex 14 says. Explain like I'm 5, when a computer freezes, what is actually happening to the system and components? Capillard says. Hash deadlock often when two threads or processes are fighting over access to some resource, and there's a deadlock processor needs exclusive access to data structures X and Y. So does process B, but maybe not in the same order. So processor grabs X, and then tries to grab Y. But process B has already grabbed Y, and is now trying to grab X. Awaits forever for Y to become available, but that's never gonna happen, because B is waiting forever for X. There are protocols to prevent this from happening, but you can't mess it up. Hash priority inversion processor, a high priority process, needs X. But X is currently held by process B, a low priority process. Processor can't run. Because it's waiting for X. Process B can't run because process C, a medium priority process is currently running. Maybe a being blocked is somehow blocking. C. Or maybe it's just going to take a long long time for C to finish, allowing B to continue, and eventually allowing it to finally have resource X. Hash networking delays you can never count on a network connection being fast, or even being there at all. You click on a tab on your browser. For whatever the hell reason, your browser needs to check if a file has been changed before it decides what to do. But you've installed Dropbox on your system, and now the simple function that should have taken mere milliseconds to check that file's modification time now has to wait until Dropbox makes some sort of round trip access to the servers in the cloud, which for some reason are taking a long time to respond. I mention this example in particular, because it's made my desktop computer at home nearly unusable this week. Wukobot says. Computer normally works by freezing, doing something, then unfreezing, but just really fast. Like thousands of times faster than a blink of an eye, so you don't notice it. When it freezes, that means there was a bad command somewhere, that doesn't let the computer get to the unfreeze command. It does the same thing over and over. It's stuck, like a car stuck in mud and the wheels spinning, but not making any progress. Or like a car in a roundabout spinning round and round, and never exiting the roundabout. So yeah, oftentimes it's still working furiously, so you'll hear the sound and it heats up, but it's in a loop, and it won't get anywhere. There are guard rails, but the guard rails aren't foolproof. R slash explain like M5. Flickr1985 says. 
Explain like I'm 5. How are Japanese IC cards so fast at detecting and processing payment? Japanese IC cards are so amazingly fast I don't even have to slow down from a fast walk when paying for access to the subway line, or any train, or vending machine for that matter. In other countries, you have to tap the card on the machine and leave it there for a few seconds before it registers your pay. How did Japan get their right cards to work so fast? Nora Helps says. Usage of the card involves scanning it at a card reader. The card's technology allows for it to be read at a short distance from the reader, so contact is not required. Ekman says. It's not so much about the card, but the scanning equipment itself. The card itself only holds a few bytes of data. The scanner takes the card data, and has to run them against a database to ensure that the card is valid, and has money for the fare. This database is not stored inside the scanner itself but somewhere else, probably not even in the station itself, but most likely a centralized server location. So basically in Japan, or at least Tokyo, given the volume of passengers on trains and their priority on smooth and quick operation, they've made sure that the latency on this process is as low as possible. Fatkuki says. It's a bit over half a year since I looked it up, and I don't feel like doing it RN, sleepy, but a fake they use the Felicarafid standard, that is specifically optimized for speed, most of the world doesn't use it, because you would have to pay a fee to Sony. Whereas most other Rafid standards in the EMV payment card system can be used by many companies, if you want to use it in Japan visa Itachi to Joe Budisuka is a useful sentence, so they don't try the other style card terminal. That is also the reason that only few phone brands can be used at those gates without activating slash buying the phone in Japan. The iPhone activates the feature when you are in Japan. Google Pixel also do something like that I think. Most others don't do anything unless you bought the Japan edition. One neat thing about Felica enabled phones is that it works completely autonomously from the phone. Even if it doesn't have any battery. So there's no time wasted going through the phone's processing before sending the authentication reply to the scanner. That's all for this video thank you for watching please subscribe.